my name is Dion Taylor, exactly. It's not Diane. I usually start, you know, slapping people when they call me Diane. Everybody gets one and then, you know, the slapping party starts. So anyways, I work for RSM as a director, uh, TMC business apps. Sounds really fancy. It really isn't. So I'm on a pre-sale side, which means that I get to work right with the fun stuff, all the new stuff, you know, getting on the horn with the customer and then kind of deciding on what would be good to uh, to show for them. So I also do in my spare time uh, some authoring for LinkedIn Learning as well. And I'm a Microsoft MVP. So below I have a couple of links here. Feel free to follow that. Um, I'm trying to write blog articles on a weekly basis. The same thing with my YouTube videos as well. And if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, feel free because I'm an open networker and I feel the more connections, the better, right? So, all right. So a little bit more about myself. So I was born and raised in the Netherlands, hence, right, a different pronunciation of my first name. I'm still fighting with my mom about that. Thanks, mom. I used to be a hairdresser, which is kind of interesting, I think. It kind of proves that you don't have to have an IT background to start working with Dynamics 365 and the Power Platform. I started working with um, Dynamics CRM, as it was called back in the day, in 2011. Uh, again, not having any background or anything like that. And then I wanted to show you my pride and joy, my little Mr. Tucker here, big picture. Um, I usually try to involve him in my videos as well because he's such a little sweetie pie. But anyways, enough of that. So let's talk about what exactly uh, we're going to be using here for those opportunity approvals, right? This is really, uh, like Boba said earlier by Dave, right? We're using all of these different components. So we're looking at uh, the Power Platform, right? We're looking at using Power Automate flows. Uh, we're also looking at using Microsoft Exchange. So this is Microsoft 365. We're using Microsoft Teams as well. And then, of course, uh, mainly really attaching those approvals, making them viewable, I should say, right, to the folks that want to see what's going on uh, in Dynamics 365. So we're also using, I'm using Dynamics 365 sales for that. So let me explain to you first kind of what I'm trying to accomplish here, right? So I'm, I'm more of a fan of like show, tell, show, right? So first I'm going to kind of talk about what we're trying to to accomplish here, then I'm going to do a demo of how that works. And then we can kind of, if we have some time left, take a look under the hood and, and see what we're doing here. So the concept here is that we're going to have a sales rep that submits an approval for an opportunity by triggering a power automate flow. So obviously, right, this, this is usually automatic. It could be based on estimated revenue. It could be based on a particular customer type, whatever we want that to be, right? So in my example that I'm gonna demo for you guys, I'm gonna manually kick off that approval process just so you can kind of see how that works. So. The first thing that the Power Automate flow then does is it's actually going to create a row in a custom table in Dynamics 365. And this table really holds all the data regarding approvals, right, that I'm using in Dynamics 365. So what then happens, Flow is then going to query for all the members of an office group. So I'm, I'm kind of utilizing these office groups as a distribution list in Microsoft Exchange. And each of those members then gets that team approval request sent to them through, right? We're going to be able to view that in Outlook, but we also can respond to that and view that in Microsoft Teams as well. So currently, if the approval is rejected. I don't have anything happening. My process just ends, but obviously you could have, you know, something else happening there. Uh, maybe they need to give additional information, whatever that might be. I just kept it simple, so nothing's going to happen. My process is just going to end there. But if it does get approved, then the row of the custom table that I just mentioned in Dynamics 365 with that approval information is going to be updated, right? So we can, for example, see if there were any notes there uh, that were sent by the person who approved it. Uh, we can see who approved it, when it was approved, all of that information directly visible from within the opportunity because I'm tying those two together. And then lastly, you could do something like posting 
uh, that a, a message saying, hey, this opportunity has been approved to like a Teams channel or something like that. And then I also have, uh, you can also have that email notification going to the original requester, but we already have that notification going through Teams as well, right? Saying like, hey, this has been approved or this has been denied or whatever that might be. So that's kind of what it is in a nutshell. Hopefully that makes sense. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to go and jump into Dynamics 365 and kind of show you how that works, right? So what I'm going to do here again, I said I'm going to trigger this manually. You will probably usually uh, have right a trigger set up, like I said earlier, like maybe estimated revenue or whatever that trigger might be. But I'm just going to go ahead and do that manually. So let me just park this uh, this this stage here of this business process flow here on the side. So what I'm doing here is uh, approval required. Again, normally this would be automatic. So I'm going to say yes here because I'm demonstrating this and I'm going to do an approval. So as soon as I save this, like you just saw in that slide, we're now going to have uh, Power Automate creating that approval record. Now, the other thing that I added here is you can see here that the next couple of steps in this stage are now locked. So I can't move on in my business process flow, right? Not until after that approval has been has gone through, so to speak. So let me just show you here the approval history. So this is what just happened, right? We actually now have that approval record. Uh, that's that custom table here associated with that opportunity waiting to to get approved, right? So at any point in time, the sales rep can go back in here and kind of see where we're at with that. Well, we're still waiting for the approval, which was submitted today at 1129. Now, what happens then, because I'm submitting that team's approval, is you can see here that I get that email message, right, from Power Automate basically saying, okay, um, this needs to be approved. And the nice thing is I can approve or reject directly here from my email, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Then if I look inside of Teams here, you can see here that in the activity here, that since I'm actually myself on that team that needs to approve it, you can see here that it's either myself or Chris or Derek that needs to approve this particular opportunity. But at this particular point, any of us can now approve this particular opportunity. Again, this really depends on how you set up your approvals. You can also do multi-step approvals, right? That's coming to Power Automate Flow as well. Um, but I kept it very, very simple, just kind of to show the concept of this. So from here, what I can do is, again, also reject or approve. I'm going to actually approve that because right already said with projection, nothing is going to happen here. So I'm going to put my comments in here. I'm going to say this is amazing. We have super we have uh, super uh, people that are very excited uh, about these approvals, as you can see here. Then I'm going to say this is going to be approved. And what is happening now, and this is just part of that approval functionality here inside of Microsoft Teams, is that right now I'm getting that final status as the initiator of that approval, right? So I can see that this has been approved and that what my Power Automate flow then does, if I go back here and let me go back to my opportunity and refresh that, let me go back here to my approval history here. Oh, it's already, oops, it's already open here. So we can now see that, first of all, all of my fields are now unlocked. I can move on in my sales process. And if I look at my approval history, we can now see, right, it was sent to the approval team and it was approved by me with my approver notes in here as well, just to keep track of that. Now, the nice thing about this as well is that now you can kind of build your charts on that as well, right? Because we're storing this data. I know these approvals are already stored in Dataverse, so you would be able to maybe attach those as well. I just wanted to do a custom table. So if you just wanted to separate some of that data out and then build your charts on that, you're going to be able to, uh, to do that as well. So I still have a couple of minutes left. So I did want to show you my Power Automate flow here. So basically what's going to happen here is I'm, I'm updating uh, an opportunity here and that's kind of what is triggering, right? That, that flow, that power automate flow. 
And then what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to grab my uh, group members. And this is really from that office group, right, which kind of functions as that distribution list here. So that's all I'm doing here, just getting those members here. And once I have those members, I'm, I'm grabbing their email addresses and then I'm joining those email addresses because, again, normally you have more than just one approver in there, right? And then I'm starting that approval in Microsoft Teams. So I'm just going to say, hey, I'm assigning this to any member, right, in my in my office group here. So, and then I'm putting in here which opportunity this is regarding. I'm putting, I'm kind of hard coding a link in here and then just plugging in the ID. And then I also have a link to that opportunity, right? Because that might be easier for people to actually be able to visit that opportunity and kind of see, hey, is this something that actually needs to be approved? So then from here, uh, I'm really looking at that outcome, right? You can kind of see here if no, oh, I actually have something happening. Yeah, it's it's just updating my uh, my approval record in Dynamics saying it's been denied, right? And then I'm like updating, let's see here, this is my approval, right? Who was the approver? What are the notes? Uh, the approver ID and whether or not what that status reason was. Oh, so this is equal to reject. So this is if it is approved. If it is rejected, I'm doing the same thing, right? I'm basically updating that with that, right? It's been a status reason of rejected. And then lastly, right, we can actually post a message to a channel in, uh, in Teams as well. And I think I have that in here. Here is my sales approval. So that was my last step, right? Opportunity, the status has been changed to approved. Um, so kind of showing this as well. And again, this is kind of just showing you what we can do, not just within Dynamics 365, but within the entire stack, right? We're using all these different tools here uh, together, so to speak. So one last thing, and obviously I'm sure that you guys are aware of this, that this solution can obviously build, be used for other tables as well, right? You, you don't have to just use this on opportunity. So for example, I added this to Dynamics 365 field service where certain work orders might need approval prior to scheduling that work. So what we've done here is I actually added a not to exceed field, as you can see here on the work order and the account field also has that data in there. So then what happens is if my total amount here, my estimated total amount is actually higher than my not to exceed, it will kick off that flow. So that's kind of, uh, you know, just giving you another example of, uh, of, of ways where that this could be used. So hopefully that was helpful. Uh, David, I'm going to send it back to you. Awesome, Dion. Thank you so, so much. This is really cool. Again, really loving the overlapping technologies here, everybody. This is a great, great showcase of how all of them work together flawlessly. So thank you, Dion. Uh, really looking forward to your next demo.